The Browns and the Chiefs, for my money, the game of the week. Hopefully um, it lives up to the billing here. I am super, super bullish on the Browns this year. And so I am wondering, you know, how this game one plays out as they go on the road to the Chiefs as depending on what book you get it at and where you get it at as either five and a half or six point favorites. It is six at BetMGM, five and a half at uh, a couple of the other big books out there, a total sitting at 54 and a half. I mean, if you look at this Browns team, I don't really even need to try and give you what you saw last year because it's almost an entirely new defense uh, that that we're looking at from this Brown squad. They brought in safety John Johnson, a guy that if you don't know is one of the better safeties in all the league. They brought in corner Troy Hill. They brought in uh, Jadavian Clowney. They brought in Terrence Mitchell. They brought in Tack McKinley for depth on the defensive line. They brought in Malik Jackson at defensive tackle. They drafted Greg Newsom in the first round at corner. They drafted a linebacker with their second overall pick. They went and they did what they needed to do. And oh yeah, they get back Greedy Williams and they get back Grant Delpit, who didn't play all year last year as well because of injury. So this is a completely new look Browns defense that you're going to be seeing on the field this year. And on the offensive side of the ball, oh yeah, a little guy named Odell Beckham will be back for them as well. The Chiefs are the Chiefs are the Chiefs. I don't need to tell you what the Chiefs uh, are and what they're all about. If anything, they're going to be just as good as we've seen in years past. They go out, they knew what their weakness was, which was that offensive line, and they go out and they just bought a whole new offensive line. And so as long as they have cohesiveness, as long as they can gel, as long as they are, you know, not not kind of trying to figure things out here in week one, you would think that that's going to be a, a really, really big strength for them on top of the fact of having the best quarterback that maybe we've ever seen. I'm going to sit back and watch this one. I will say this. I am tempted if Chiefs money does come in late. I do want to at least throw this out there. If Chiefs money comes in late and this thing happens to touch a touchdown, if I can get the Browns plus seven, if I can get the Browns plus a touchdown, I will be I will go ahead and pull the trigger at that point. I will go ahead and play the Browns should this thing get up to uh it, it hit six and a half a couple of different times and it didn't stay there and it came back down. I think the Chiefs are public enough. I think the Chiefs are going to draw a decent amount of money from the casual better out there. I just don't know if it'll be enough to get it to the full touchdown. But if it does, it will be a play on the Browns for me. Steven, you have a play on this one, and you're looking at a total instead. Yeah, I'm going to take the under 54 and a half in this one. And I say that with acknowledging that I might be playing with fire, trying to play an under in a Kansas City Chiefs game. But I expect Cleveland's game plan in this one to play as slow as humanly possible to try and keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines. And I think they have a chance to exploit a matchup in that regard. Uh, Kansas City was 31st on defense last year in weighted rush DVOA. Uh, That gets lost a little bit in the raw numbers considering how often teams had to play catch up against Kansas City. But against the rush, they were not very good. And Cleveland's offense was seventh in that weighted rush DVOA uh, and was first in run blocking grade at at PFF. That offensive line is just a juggernaut for Cleveland. So uh, combine that with you look at what Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb did against Kansas City Uh, Last year in the postseason, they both averaged more than five yards per carry in that game. Uh, I think that they are going to play slow. And if you look at the overall pace numbers that Cleveland had a year ago, they were 27th in overall pace in situation neutral situations. They were uh, 21st. They were in, in games that were within six points on either side. They were 29th in pace. So I think the game plan is pretty clear for them that they're going to try in the first half to keep this close, play slow, rely on their their amazing running game and offensive line. And I think that's going to hopefully limit possessions here to, to cash this under. Brad, you don't have a bet on this one, but I imagine you are going to be watching very intently with uh, with the rest of the world because uh, a couple of teams, one that we know is going to be good in the Chiefs and one in the Browns that everybody seems to think is going to have a, a chance to take a massive step forward this year. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm with you, Matt. I think the Browns defense could be like one of the most improved units, you know, anywhere. But does it gel week one? And does it gel week one against Andy Reid, who's, you know, historically, he's been a wizard 
A, early in the season. Um, I think Andy Reid is he's 11 and 2 against the spread in September since 2017, which, you know, I know people go, oh, trends, trends, trends. But he's also, he's like 70% against the spread after a bye week as well. So to me, it's if you give him extra time to cook up his brand new schemes, you know, he's going to cook up some good stuff for you. So if you're, if there's a lot of new pieces on that defense um, and probably their weakest at linebacker and, you know, they will they they will they will trick those linebackers with RPOs and play action and stuff. So though I do like the Browns long term, I you know I can see them giving up some points here. Um, and then the other side of the ball, I thought it was interesting. Obviously, the big thing for the Chiefs is the new offensive line, four of five new starters. But the the, the offensive line is a bit like a defense where a key part of it is communication. You know, you know it's passing off that ra- that Russia to him and you know, who, who's picking up which blitzer. So again, they, they could be good long-term, but not that good in week one if the Browns chuck a few blitzes at them. So a bit of uncertainty, which is why I didn't do anything. Um, would lean the Brown side and would lean the under. Yeah, because of the way Cleveland will play as, uh, as Stephen laid out. So yeah, they're, they're my thoughts. 